Hello YouTube, tiny house people and gardeners everywhere. It's a beautiful day in the Ozarks. Chris here to show you the spring cleanup that we've accomplished on the garden at this point. As you can see, we've completely taken the weeds out from around the perimeter, uh, which you'll be able to see as I walk around. But uh, we laid plastic down, pulled up all the uh, blocks here, laid plastic down, um, also uh, put mulch underneath the blocks as well as behind and as you can probably see we if you look closely uh, you'll be able to see that we have done some patchwork on the uh, fence because we had problems with uh, with the smaller rabbits not so much the big ones but the little ones getting into the garden and, and uh, growing bigger as a result of that at our expense so uh, we took care of that little bit of little bit of a problem uh, we've got a lot of small plants planted out, so uh, it'll be a little bit yet before we mulch in the beds. But as you'll notice, we have gotten rid of all the weeds and repaired uh, plastic and done all kinds of things to uh, clean everything up from the inside. So let's go around and take a look at that real quick. It'll be just a moment. Be right back. And here we are at the entrance. You can probably see a little bit uh, of plastic exposed there. Uh, I was one bag short. Uh, what you're going to be seeing is about, oh, seven bags, seven pretty good sized bags of, uh, of mulch that went into uh, redoing this area. And over here you'll notice we have our empty buckets. We got one bucket that is actually falling apart there on the end. Now one thing about these buckets, food grade or not, uh, and we certainly recommend that you use food grade buckets, uh, but they only last for about two seasons in a really heavy sun, maybe three if you're lucky. Uh, and so if you are doing uh, Dutch buckets or uh, the round buckets with the hydroponic system, those sort of things, in, in the intense light of a greenhouse, uh, just keep in mind you're probably going to have to redo those buckets every once in a while. Uh, we're getting ready to do probably about a dozen buckets out here all together, so we'll be replacing the ones that have fallen apart and uh, we'll be using uh, a different kind of system. We'll go into that uh, later in another video. But we'll be doing sweet potatoes in our buckets for the most part. Here in the Midwest United States, we get just about every bad bug you can imagine that a gardener would want to not come up against. So uh, we have this under cover. What, what we've got in here, and I will lift the cover here and you can kind of take a look at it is uh, there is some spinach there we, that we've uh, transplanted from another bed but that's just for the short term. In between those we have uh, kale and we have cauliflower. Now the kale isn't quite so subject to the uh, to the problems that we have with cauliflower, with broccoli, and really uh, very badly with cabbage and that is the cabbage worm. Uh, often known just as the uh, standard inchworm. Now, the inchworm has been uh, a big part of folklore. There's a lot of kitty songs, kitty's books, um, videos, and many other things about the cute little inchworm. Well, let me tell you something. The inchworm is not cute when you're a gardener. He is a terrible pest. And the white moths that lay the inchworm are a terrible pest, but not if you keep them covered. Now, you could take the approach of using uh, chemicals, um, nasty chemicals, or you could take the organic approach of trying to do things such as diatomaceous earth and that sort of thing. But uh, even those, uh, I, I find that those don't work, work really nearly as well and they're much more expensive in the long run than uh, using a simple mechanical devices means, such as a cover. So we're using a net cover here for this uh, cauliflower here, and you can also see the kale over there. That's uh, um, Russian red kale, and we will be using that. And when the, when the spinach goes to seed, and it's winter spinach, so it'll go to seed fairly soon. And, uh, and we'll harvest what we can get out of that between now and then. Uh, but uh, the main thing is to keep the cauliflower covered. 
Now, if you had kale by itself and you didn't have any broccoli, cabbage, or cauliflower in the garden, probably the inchworms are not going to bother. The moths are not going to lay their eggs on it because they don't really like it particularly. But what happens is if they're attracted to a garden that has any of that in it, they will also lay their uh, eggs indiscriminately on other kinds of plants that, uh, that will suffice in a pinch. And kale is certainly one of those plants. But uh, that's what we have right there is, uh, is a covering. And it's simply, uh, it's simply a structure made out of uh, one by twos essentially, uh, fur one by twos and a few screws. Had to drill pilot holes to make that work because uh, those things tend to crack out real easily, uh, split out real easily. But we also have, uh, this netting is just some, some uh, leftover netting from, uh, from a uh, outdoor patio type structure uh, that my wife picked up for free somewhere quite a while ago. But it's kind of neat. Uh, it works real well. Now, also wanted to feature in this video this right here because this is, and let me zoom in on it, this is actually a second-hand leek. Uh, if you know what a leek is, it's similar to a shallot, similar to an onion. Uh, it's from the same family. The leek grows quite large and has a different, a different flavor. But uh, what we did here was we'd simply, um, we had purchased this leek along with many others at a uh, farmer's market here locally. Uh, and uh, that was about, oh, two weeks ago, a little less than two weeks ago. And what we did was we, uh, we cut the bottom quarter off of the leek bulb. And uh, so, uh, Everything else from the leek we used and uh, put in a soup and had a nice soup out of, out of the leek and, and other vegetables. And then what we did is we soaked this for a little while. And I've got an article on tinyhousesforall.com about that. And uh, it's a real simple process. But if you want to, uh, anytime you have a full uh, green onion or a leek or a shallot, uh, and, they're, and they're fairly freshly picked, you can cut the bottom, say, quarter of the white bulb part off, and you can use the rest of the bulb and the rest of the uh, greens in whatever you use it for, store it for later use uh, as you normally would, and then you just soak that in a, in, in a warm, slightly warmed water, uh, and usually it's only, I only do it for like maybe 72 hours or so, and then I plant it and put, put plant it down with the root side down and the cutting is buried under about a quarter inch of soil. And when I did that with this leek, this is only seven days worth of growth right here. So that thing popped up in just about three days and in the four, in four days since that, it's put on all this green. Because we cut everything, all the green was cut off and most of the white as well, just a quarter of an inch approximately. Uh, you want to make sure the root structure is intact underneath when, when you do that. If it's if it's just uh, a cutting without the roots, it probably won't work very well. But this way, you can you can actually take um, uh, onions, green onions, shallots, and leeks, and you can replant that part of it, and eat the rest of it, and never have to buy another bulb, um, at least for that whole season. So that's what we're doing with that. So just wanted to kind of show you that real quick uh, before uh, panning out to the rest of the garden. But as you can see. It's all looking pretty good here. Now, as you can see, we've already dug up some of the spinach from these back boxes there in the distance. We'll also be digging up the rest of this. Uh, we've already transplanted a lot of it over to some of these other boxes. And uh, this winter spinach probably will go to seed probably in the next 30 days. Uh, so whatever, at that point, whatever we can get out of it, we'll harvest. And what we're going to do is we are going to uh, have another project, which we'll go into in another video at another time, where we're digging out these bag boxes and we're going to actually put in a different system of uh, growing. And we'll be growing uh, probably all of our tomatoes along the back wall this time 
and perhaps some peppers as well in front of them. So it'll be kind of a neat little experiment. But what I wanted to do is I, as I walk down here is to show you another thing that we're doing. And uh, as you may have noticed from a previous video, uh, we had an indoor window garden and uh, facing south so that uh, we had nice sun coming in uh, throughout the season. And what we were doing is growing potato slips in there. And so what we've done is we've uh, now taken the potato slips and we've detached them from the potato and threw the, threw the main potato away. Uh, at that point it was getting a little mushy but uh, we've got them the uh, plants here as you can see are in the water and they are being rooted now it got just a little cold last night and there's a, a few leaves that are not doing so well but for the most part uh, I think we're going to be successful here and using these. This is simply a water jug, a milk jug, a uh, juice jug, whatever it ha would have had in it. These were water jugs. And we simply have cut away the top, left the handle on so we could grab a hold of it, and uh, then we just stable down the edges. We wanted, we folded this over, cut it so we could fold this over so that we didn't have a rough edge here uh, to uh, perhaps damage the plants. So that's what we've got. We left a little bit of potato attached just to help keep it going until it roots. But we have this one, we have this one, and then over here we have two more. And so uh, we'll be changing the water out on that periodically, like perhaps every other day or so. Uh, we've just gotten that started, so the roots actually haven't formed on them yet. But we're kind of expecting that to work uh, out pretty good. Kind of stretch them out in different directions so they don't get all tangled up. Uh, there you can see our tomatoes uh, as well as uh, strawberries and garlic. Now the potatoes are what's called Carolina Reds. Now if you, uh, if you don't know anything about sweet potatoes or don't know much about them, there are hundreds if not a thousand varieties or more of sweet potatoes, but there are certainly many hundreds. And uh, this Carolina Red, there's many others that are called Red This or something Red, because uh, the Red is a, a, a major color with sweet potatoes. But we've tried probably, I don't want to say 30 different varieties. We've planted a dozen different varieties, but 30 different varieties. Uh, a farmer at the farmer's market has some really good sweet potatoes and he carries like 40 varieties and we've tried all the ones that he's recommended and the, these Carolina Reds are by far the best sweet potato out there. They are super sweet. They are super tender. They are, the, even the skins, are easy to eat. You know a lot of times you, you, you don't want to eat the skins on, on certain potatoes because they're just tough. But these are, the skins are sweet, they almost melt in your mouth, they're just that tender. So we got some of those potatoes from the farmer's market, organically raised, and we started in our indoor window garden, we began to raise these slips. It's just the way you all, you, you've always probably seen it done in a school project. You just take a mason jar, get a sweet potato that will fit into that, uh, fill it up most of the way with water. Slip your sweet potato in there with the root side down and the and the uh, shoot side up. Uh, put in some toothpicks to help stabilize it if you have to uh, into the sides of it. And then you just set it in the window and pretty much just make sure the water level stays pretty constant. And it'll put out a bunch of roots from the potato and then eventually it'll shoot shoots out of the top. And those shoots are what gets replanted and uh, then those shoots from from the bottom of those shoots it sends out roots from the bottom few nod uh, nodes on that uh, on that uh, sweet potato root shoot and uh, and reroots itself and then makes sweet potatoes so uh, that's what we're doing with that we also uh, have some uh, excuse the traffic noise we also have some uh, uh, blackberries and so these uh, blackberries will make a nice addition to our container garden, which of course is going to contain sweet potatoes in buckets and perhaps a few other things as well. 
So uh, that's kind of where we're at right now. It, uh, at times, we are having to take uh, some things back in. Uh, but probably in the next uh, 10 days, we'll look at the 10-day forecast, and hopefully it'll be uh, one that'll give us the clear go-ahead to, uh, to finish putting together the garden for this season, or at least the early part of the season, and uh, then we'll let you know what's going on then. I uh, hope that's been helpful, and uh, if you have any other questions, by all means, comment, uh, um, send us an email, uh, let us know what you think. Uh, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate uh, everyone out there. So uh, hope you're getting ready for a great gardening season here in the north. If you're in the southern latitudes, hope you had a successful garden season. And uh, we certainly intend to do a lot of videos and, uh, and articles about preparing for the next season, as the case may be. So until next time, have a great day. Happy gardening.